I got sent to two drug rehabs when I was 17 years old. I spent my whole last year of high school in rehab. And at 18 years old, I was in Alcoholics Anonymous, a 12-step program. And so at that time, 17, I already knew I was an alcoholic and drug addict and had already had major consequences in my life that led me to being put in rehab at those ages, you know, arrests and things. Um, I ended up not staying clean and sober at that time um, I for maybe six months when I got out of the rehab. And then I decided to start partying, drinking and using again. And, um, you know, you bring up that very specific story. So I'll, I'll bring that in because I trust the flow of this conversation because again, there's so many aspects to touch on, but, um, you know, I, my first drug was boys cr having crushes on boys in school and then it never being realized. And me growing up as a kid and young teenager, thinking I'm ugly, thinking, you know, I'll never have a boyfriend. And yet my whole interior life was consumed with having these secret crushes that I could never tell anyone, you know, not even my best friends. And, and then finally, when I started using drugs, I, I, and I, whatever, got a little attractive, I guess, or something. But then I started realizing that my body was currency, that I could give myself away sexually and in a way to try and get love. So I start, and then also the combination of <laughs> using and drinking led me to do stupid things sexually, you know, making decisions I would never normally make sleeping around basically and not being safe. And so I say all that to say that this specific story about this boyfriend that you read about, it's called the power of secrets and lies is the blog post. Um, I, I had this fear that I had got HIV. This was in the mid nineties. So back then HIV, you know, it, it was a very, very scary thing. And I mean, it still is, but they've come a long way now, but back then it was a very big deal. So um, I just had this fear that I had it. And yet because of my addiction and just where I, I was like, not going to get tested because I was too scared. I was too scared if it was positive, oh my God, what am I gonna do? So I would rather live in fear and just think I have it rather than just getting tested. So as a result of that, I'm living with my boyfriend. He was my the love of my life at that time, you know, my first love. We were living together for two and a half years. And um, I just was like, I can't live like this, but yet I could not get tested or I would not. So I decided instead I want to die <laughs> and I'm going to run away. And that's, I'll just die somehow if I just run away, have a, this death wish mission. So I was in Florida. I, I went all the way to California, which is a very long way. <laughs> and um, I didn't tell anybody where I went. And I was missing. My parents hired a private investigator to try and find me. Um, I mean, it was it was awful and then of course my boyfriend comes home one day to a note I'm sorry I had to leave I love you you know something just something I didn't tell him the truth and um yeah so I mean it's a, that we could talk the whole time about that story but suffice it to say that it was hell on earth um in many, many ways. I lived through it. I'm lucky because I went to Southern California, which is one of the most dangerous places in the U.S. And, you know, I'm 22, young. Nobody knows where I am on the entire planet. And I fall in with these very heavy drug-using crowds and gang gangsters and guns. And it was... It was a very traumatic experience that I <laughs> lived through, but I got arrested is, is what happened. And then I went home to my mother, which was the last place on earth I wanted to be is back home. You know, I wanted to die and yet that didn't happen. And I didn't 
you know, do anything. I didn't try. Um, so I came home. I started working in a pharmacy, which is not a great idea for a drug addict. So I started stealing everything. Just, I mean, the, the hole in my soul, the, the pain that I felt, there was never a moment that I was not in excruciating emotional pain and I could not drink or use enough drugs to escape that. I hated myself. I didn't think it was possible for somebody to feel that low about themselves. And yet I did. So I hatched a plan to escape that situation. Um, there was a, a whole bottle of 500 pills that had high street value. So I took the entire bottle from the pharmacy, knowing I was committing a major crime when before I had just taken here and there, you know, things that I could just get high off of. I saw a bottle of 500 pills, I took it, and long, again, long story short, I got arrested on federal drug charges. My father turned me in. He, my mom found the pills in my room. My father called the pharmacy, and um, yeah, so I got arrested. I spent 11 days in jail, and during that time, I asked for a pregnancy test because I knew that I had gotten pregnant. Um, <laughs> it's, this, this is my, you know, the depths of my alcohol and drug addiction, which thankfully, hopefully ended. I'm about to, get, you know, I'm about to get clean and sober, like after that experience, but I'm just sharing, like, this is the bottom. This is the worst of the worst. Um, I was pregnant and I didn't want to have a baby. Um, so my, the guy I was dating after I got out of jail took me to get an abortion a few days after I get out. Um, and then a few days after that, I went back to meetings, 12 step meetings, because I had these drug charges and my lawyer had said, you can't get into any trouble or you're going to like federal prison for up to 30 years. So I went back to the program, the 12-step program I'd been in before, and this time I was ready. So that was February 1999. Let your light shine. Help others find their way out of the darkness. Extraordinarily inspiring stories from ordinary people like you and I. I believe we are all extraordinary, yet we're all ordinary. Let your light shine.